Hello, I'm Mrs. Conrad, and I teach third grade at Juniata Elementary School. Hello, boys and girls. I'm Mrs. Taylor, and I teach third grade at Baker Elementary. We're here today to talk to you some more about poetry. Readers, I was in my kitchen yesterday preparing my dinner. I was making fajitas. When I started chopping my onion, I had to pause. Suddenly, this onion didn't seem like a normal vegetable to me anymore. I was looking at it with brand new eyes. I realized that onions are like a metaphor for poetry. They have multiple layers, just like poems do. After I had this thought, I realized that this unit gave me a special superpower. I now see things differently than I did before. Poetry readers also read other texts differently. Knowing to expect small passages can mean a lot. Readers, today we want to teach you that readers of poetry learn to pay attention to the world around them. Poems teach them to be reflective. Listen as I read a poem called The Crocodile by Lewis Carroll. How does the little crocodile improve his shining tail and pour the waters of the Nile on every golden scale? How cheerfully he seems to grin, how neatly he spreads his claws and welcome little fishies in with gently smiling jaws. Now watch as I think aloud about the poem, The Crocodile. I'm going to use these sentence frames to help me reflect. When I read phrases like shining tail, cheerfully he seems to grin, welcomes little fishies in, and gently smiling jaws, this makes me wonder if the author wants us to believe the crocodile is beautiful and friendly. Part of me agrees with this, but the part where he says he welcomes little fishies in with gently smiling jaws makes me think that crocodiles are more ferocious because the reason he's smiling is to welcome the fish in to eat them. Lewis Carroll, the author of this poem, seems to want me to think that crocodiles are beautiful, but other poems or people want me to think that crocodiles are ferocious. Readers, this skill we just practiced should be something we now use for every book we read. This is not just a poetry skill. With this in mind, let's take a look at one of our favorite books, Because of Winn-Dixie. This book is written in a way that really makes me reflect and wonder. I found this line in particular that causes me to reflect not just on the book, but also on what's going on in the world around me. Let's look at the quote on the slide. There ain't no way you can hold on to something that wants to go. You understand? You can only love what you got while you got it. This is the part of the story after Win dixie has run away and Glory Dump is trying to make Opal feel better. This makes me wonder if Opal can't let go of things. Remember when we were back in the classroom and discussed this book? Opal's trying to find Win dixie because he took off during a storm. At this point in the story, the preacher wants to give up because he doesn't think they will be able to find the dog. We discussed how Opal was always trying to hold on to things. Like in the beginning of the book, she was trying to hold on to her mom. She couldn't accept the fact that her mom wasn't coming back and that she had left their family. As the story unfolds, Opal learns that she can't hold on to things that want to go. In this lesson, the meaning of this quote is that you must accept things that you can't control. Let's think about this in our own lives. We can't change the fact that schools are closed because of the coronavirus. We have to accept that there are new ways to learn and communicate with our friends until all of this is over. Here's today's assignment. You're going to use your new poetic superpower of seeing things differently than you did before with a fiction book. Find a place in your book where the author includes lines that are meaningful to you in the way you see the world. Use these sentence starters to reflect in your journal. This makes me wonder if, part of me agrees with this, but another part of me thinks that, this quote seems to want me to think, but, okay readers, off you go.